Now, um, before getting to the, to the heart of the matter, to the main theme of my talk, I'd like to explain a few things about uh, analytic methods in um, algebraic geometry. So as a general introduction to, to, my, to my lecture, let's consider the following. So let X be a compact complex manifold and let L uh, be a line bound along X, like, uh, like here. So then, uh, so let's assume to start with that this linear system n times L is free. That is to say, for any point of the manifold, there is a section uh, of uh, m times L, which is non-vanishing at that point. And uh, let's consider basis, the basis uh, which I denoted by uj for some j running from 0 to n of h naught of um, uh, x and m times L. <clears throat> then, once we fix such a basis, we have a metric on, uh, on, uh, on the bundle L, which, is, which can be defined as follows. So either uh, in a global manner, like, uh, like here, so we have a map induced by the, by the basis UJ, which, is, which I denoted by phi, capital phi, like that. And then the metric on L, which is denoted by HL, uh, to the power N, when N is this power here. Uh, it's just the inverse image of the, of the Fubinich 2D metric from, uh, from the uh, projective space. Now, this can be described, well, actually, there's a misprint here. This is not capital N, but just uh, small m, but uh, let's forget about that. Now, um, uh, in, a, in a more uh, down-to-earth, in a local, local uh, terms, this metric can be described by its local weights, which are given as follows. So uh, if we consider phi a local trivialization of the bound L, and we have a V, so let's, let's take V a vector in, L, uh, in, in, in the stock of L over the point Z, then we just set the norm of V square as follows, it, so it will be the norm of the, of the corresponding element of C via the trivialization, exponential minus phi L of Z, where phi L is given by 1 over M times the logarithm of the sum of the square of the sections, okay? So here, uh, so this phi L is called the local weight of the metric induced by the family of sections of L. Now, the metric which is induced by, by this basis has a very, very uh, important properties, namely uh, spotted here, so the curvature, that is to say, IDD bar of the, of the local weight is semi-positive, okay? Now, if phi is an embedding, so if, if this basis is as good as giving you an embedding of x inside pn, then uh, what is happening is that the, the curvature form is even better, it is a Keller metric. Now, um, uh, there's a famous result by Kodaira, proved in around the 50s, stating a sort of converse of this, of this very simple property Namely, that we, if, if you have a line bundle, L, endowed with a metric such that the curvature is a Keller metric, <coughs> is a Keller metric, yes, then the, the line bundle is ample. That is to say, for some power M, the, the basis will give us uh, an embedding of the manifold inside Pn. So what, what Kodaira's result tells us is just by, by this differential geometric condition, the curvature uh, is a Keller metric, we, we, we have a link with algebraic geometry. That is to say, we can construct many sections of, of uh, some multiple of L. So, and this is uh, somehow uh, uh, a very important result for, um, for uh, in, in this framework of, um, of analytic methods. Namely, uh, we always try to, to use, always try to use differential geometric properties of of the first chain class of the line bundle and link them with the algebraic geometry, I mean, to, namely a uh, construction of holomorphic sections. So precisely as, for example, in, uh, in, uh, in the framework of, of um, numerical algebraic geometry, you are trying to explode, to, to, to use, the, the, um, to use the, the intersection numbers in order to construct holomorphic sections. Here, we are trying to use the, the, the uh, positivity properties of curvature of line bundles in order to construct holomorphic sections. Now, in general, things are not as simple as that, and some bundles may have base points, so that is to say common zeros of the sections we have here, and they are accounted by the singularities of, of the induced metric. Okay, so, so much about analytic methods and what we are trying to do. 
Now let me get um, to the to the first main theme of my talk, which is um, which is um, uh, which concerns the Berman Berman kernels. And before stating the result, I would like to take you to a trip in uh, function theory. Um, so that is to say, what uh, to explain what is the local version of the result I would like to present a bit later on. So I will just uh, comment on a, some, some uh, simple properties of uh, Bergman kernels on, on domains in CN. So let omega be an open subset inside CN, and let's consider a smooth function on omega denoted by small phi. And then uh, um, inside the, the space of uh, L2 uh, integrable holomorphic functions, we have the, the, the age of omega, which is the space of holomorphic functions. So that is to say, we are considering holomorphic functions such that this integral is finite. So the norm of f square exponential minus phi is, um, is integrable. Now, by, by very simple properties of, uh, of uh, holomorphic functions, the, 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 the space age of omega is a Hilbert space, so it's closed. And uh, then uh, given a point, an arbitrary point in our domain, the evaluation map, which is defined by simply by sending a function f, so an element here, to its value, so evaluation at the point z, f of z. So this, this, this function is the continuous, and then uh, it can be written as a scalar project, as, is, as it is the case in the, for, for linear continuous functions on Hilbert space. So then uh, f can be written as, as some kernel times um, this quantity here. So uh, um, f of z is integral over the capital omega, not small one as here, of k phi of z w times uh, this quantity. So this k phi is called the Berman kernel of, uh, of the domain. In fact, it is weighted a big Berman kernel because we put here the weight exponential minus phi. And it has the following properties. So it can be described like that. We just, if we just consider fj an orthonormal basis on h of omega, of course, it's orthonormal with respect to the scalar product induced by this. Then the expression of the kernel is just like, uh, like that. So sum of fj of z, fj of w bar. So we can see from here that is holomorphic in z, anti-holomorphic in w. And of course, it, it has another, another characterization called extremal characterization. Uh, so the, the restriction to the diagonal, so k phi of z and z, simply denoted by k phi of z, is the supremum of f of z square, or where f runs over all the, the elements of h of omega, for which this, this norm is smaller than 1. OK, so it can be described. So the restriction of the kernel to the diagonal can be described as a, as a, as a as follows. Now, one important, maybe a few more comments about the Berman kernels is, is that they are almost impossible to compute explicitly unless the domain omega here has a great deal of symmetry. And what, what is also important is that, is that their definition, they don't, they don't distinguish between n equal to 1 and n greater than 1. So it's the same. Does it matter the dimension? Usually things are changing radically when we move from n equal to 1 to to higher, higher, uh, to higher dimensions. So now let's complicate a little bit this picture and introduce the following. So we consider the following very simple domain, the, so the unit ball inside CN, or, uh, capital omega. And uh, D is just the unit disk inside C. So here N equals to 1. I'm sorry about that. So then uh, we also consider phi, <coughs> which is now a pluralistic harmonic function on, uh, on the product omega cross d, on the closure of this product, where the pluralistic subharmonicity just means that the Hessian of phi is uh, semi-positively defined on uh, Cn plus 1 at each point z and t. Okay? So, and if you want, the, 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 the main example of pluralistic harmonic function would be like uh, phi equals to logarithm of uh, some of the squares of holomorphic functions. Okay, so this is the, if you want, the prototype of uh, pluralistic harmonic function here. Now, what we will do is that for each fixed t inside the domain d here, let's consider phi t, so which is just a function on, uh, on uh, omega, and it, it, it induced a norm, a, a norm depending on t, of course, because this function generally depends on t, on the, on the space of holomorphic uh, integrable, L2 integrable functions 
or, or an omega. And let's, let's denote by k phi t the, the corresponding Bellman kernel. And now, something very, very important is happening, which was observed classically by Maitani Yamaguchi and many, many other people, and it was uh, reviewed recently and recast in the geometric context by Boo Bernstein. So the fact is that the function enjoyed variables z and t, given z t gives the logarithm of k phi t of z, is pluristic harmonic. Now, this is really, really remarkable because, because the normalization we impose is a c infinity operation, and usually C infinity and holomorphic, they don't quite uh, agree, right? So, so this is really remarkable. So, of course, if we fix T, then the pluristic harmonicity with respect to Z, there is no big deal. Like I said, um, because the, the Bergman curve is just given by the logarithm, by, by the sum of the squares of the whole of, um, uh, autonomous basis, so this will be pluristic harmonic, but the, the, the result is that is pluristic harmonic with respect to joint z and t, to, to both variables. <clears throat> now, just a simple example, in order to make these results a bit more believable, if you want, is that if the function phi just decomposes in a very simple manner like that, like psi of z plus eta of t, where both they are pluristic harmonic, then one can see that the Bergman kernel associated to this, to this function phi is just given by the, the one uh, associated to psi, exponential of eta of t. And then, uh, of course, the logarithm of k phi t of z is pluristic harmonic. Now, in, in general, the, the, the proof of this fact is not just as simple as that, but, uh, but and, uh, it can be done by using L2 estimates. Okay, so one more thing about uh, Berman kernels, I mean the local version of Berman kernels, uh, is that we can, uh, we can uh, cook up some L2 over m version where m is some, uh, for the time being, some real number greater than 1. So let's, let's uh, consider the semi-norm. So f L2 of m square given by the following expression. So it's the norm of f 2 of m exponential minus phi and in order to make it homogeneous to the power m. And then uh, in order to, to, to define a Berman kernel associated to this situation, we use the extremal characterization, so that let's, let's define k 2 over m of z <coughs> is the supreme of f of z to the power 2 over m, where the norm, here, the semi-norm here is at, least, at, at most equal to 1. And again, the, the, the main fact I, I mentioned before, that is to say that the joint pluristic of the kernel with respect to the, to the, to the uh, variable z and t is uh, still verified, so the logarithm of k2 of m, z of t, is pluristic harmonic. Now, uh, um, <clears throat> this I will not prove, prove for you neither, it's just, but uh, just remark that the, the, following, uh, the following simple fact, that uh, the, the seminar we have here, f to, to the power 2 over m exponential minus phi, can be written as integral of f square exponential of minus something, and the something is minus phi minus m minus 1 over m logarithm of absolute value of f square. Of course, with this I don't teach you anything, but just look at this function. Now this function, phi plus m minus 1 over m logarithm of f square, is pluristic harmonic. So it somehow looks like, it looks like what we had before with f absolute, absolute value of f square exponential minus some pluristic harmonic function, except that the pluristic harmonic function in, que in question depends on the function we have here. Nevertheless, the, the, the proof of the pluristic harmonic of the main fact here, pluristic harmonic variation of the logarithm of the Bergman kernel, uh, is uh, uh, flexible enough to adapt it to this situation, and everything goes through. Okay, now what we would like to do? What we would like to do is to, is to prove some analogous result in a global setting. That is to say, let's fix now x and y some non-singular projective manifolds, and we would like to formulate, and of course, if possible, even prove uh, some results for, for uh, holomorphic projection, for, uh, holomorphic subjective maps p from x to y, instead of just the, second, the projection of the second factor omega times, times d over d. Now, before, before trying to prove a result, we would like to, I would like to, to try to explain to you what are the, the corresponding objects from, from uh, local setting to the global one we have here. 
Now, one of the one of the main troubles, if you want, is that on the manifold, so we ha we have to find a substitute for the Lebesgue measure. Of course, the Lebesgue measure coming to the picture in the local setting where we try to integrate the functions. And on the manifold, there is no canonical Lebesgue measure. Uh, there's no canonical measure which is which is uh, there. But the, the usual trick is to, to use the canonical boundary instead. So if you want, the Lebesgue measure, d lambda, on the, on, uh, the domain omega is replaced by, by uh, uh, this boundary, kx, twisted with uh, kx bar. So d lambda looks like uh, c of n times uh, u wedge u bar, where, where u is this expression here. OK, so, so uh, as, a general, as a general principle, the canonical boundary on, 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 on the manifold, if you want, from analytic point of view, plays the role of the Lebesgue measure on, on the, on the <coughs> domains inside CN. Now, the factor exponential minus phi looks pretty much like the local weight of a metric for, the, for some line boundary. Okay? And then, what is, the rep, what, is the corresp, uh, what is the substitute for the space of a holomorphic function omega? That's really simple. So that's just the space of holomorphic function of kx plus l, holomorphic sections of, of the adjoint system associated to l. And finally, the Bergman kernel itself, it was the, it was the sum of the squares of uh, holomorphic sections, uh, holomorphic functions normalized in a special way. So in this setting, it, 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 it corresponds to a metric for the, for the kx plus l, which is induced by a special basis, which is orthonormal with respect to this metric. So you will see here that if sigma is a section of kx plus l, this is a measure on the manifold. Okay? So you take sigma wedge sigma bar, it, and you correct it with, with exponential minus phi l. So this gives you a, gives you a well-defined global measure on the manifold. So now I come to, the, to, the, to, the, to a semi-positivity result, which, is proved in the, in, uh, which corresponds to the, to the plus sub subharmonicity of the Berman kernel. So um, in, the local, in the local setting, so let's consider smooth vibrations for the, for the moment. So I insist on the fact that, for, uh, that P is assumed to be smooth. And uh, let's consider a line boundary L over X. And uh, all, always my, my line boundaries are endowed with, with some metric. And now let's, let me help you to identify the fiberwise Bergman kernel. Now, the fiber-wise Bergman kernel corresponds to a metric H relative on K relative, K relative plus L. So K relative is just Kx minus pi upper star of Ky. And uh, the identification is like that. So we consider the point X on X and Y, which is the, the image via the map P. And the section U here over the, the fiber XY of the adjoint system, so the section U, defines a section of the, of the relative canonical boundary plus L by this procedure. So we just take U wedge pi opposite of dt. So dt is the local section of the canonical of Y. And I just divide it formally, if you want, by dt to make it look as a, relative, as a section of the relative canonical boundary plus L restricted to xy. Now, this may look to you very artificial, but, but if, you, if you look at how the transition functions behave, you will see that, in fact, this is really, uh, so that the, the, this identification is the correct one. Because you, you may think that, in fact, k x over y is the same as the canonical of x restricted to the fiber. Now, what, what is the metric h relative is defined like that. So by, by duality, it is enough to, to tell you what is the measure of, of some vector in, uh, in the dual bundle, minus k x over y plus l. And then uh, the norm of, the, um, of some vector v with respect to the dual metric is just, is that just the supremum of v acting on, on this uh, section capital U square where the normalization is on, on the fiber. So again, uh, I insist on, on the fact that you normalize u fiber-wise, but then the expression coming into the, into the picture when you compute the metric is the, is the, the section capital U, which is the identification of the k x over y and k relative restricted to the fiber. Now, in this setting, Berson proved the following result, that if the curvature of L is semi-positive, so this HL is assumed to be smooth and having semi-positive curvature, then 
uh, the direct image bundle, so in the first place, this is a bundle because, uh, because of the smoothness of P. So the direct, the direct image bundle is, uh, is uh, endowed with the L2 metric <coughs> and is positive in the sense of Nakano. So it's a very strong uh, positivity properties for this direct image bundle. Now, uh, <coughs> what will be important for us is that as a consequence of this result, the metric I, I defined here for you is has a semi-positive curvature. And this, this corresponds precisely to the fact that the plurisib harmonic variation of, of Berman kernels, uh, uh, this corresponds precisely to the plurisib harmonic variation of the fiber-wise Berman kernels. Okay, so corresponds precisely with the, with, the, with the local discussion I tried to explain before. Now let's see what's coming next. Now, let, let me do the link with uh, what, uh, what are the corresponding results in algebraic geometry. Now, in algebraic geometry, we always consider surjective maps, not necessarily smooth, and effective Q divisors on X, such that, for example, the pair X and delta is KLT. <coughs> and then the, the positivity properties of this direct image, N times K relative plus delta, They've been uh, intensively analyzed by many authors in a connection with a beautiful problem. I will come uh, to that at the end. So seeing, uh, seeing that, uh, our pro joint project with Boo Bernson was to, if you want to recast and generalize this kind of results in the context of Berman kernels. <coughs> so if you want the main difficulties uh, in doing that is that, so the map P may be singular and we have to deal with this, this type of bundles, m times k relative plus l, where l, of course, corresponds to this m times delta. But the, the induced metric is, in general, singular. It's just given by, uh, by, uh, by the, the divisor delta. Nevertheless, despite all those, all those facts, if we consider a, reg a regular value y of the, of the map, of the map uh, p here, then uh, we can still define a natural metric on, on the kx relative plus l, which is like that. So the norm, I know I uh, <coughs> measure the norm of u square by the integral over the fiber, u to the power 2 over m exponential of minus this, minus phi l over m. And of course, there is a, here, it is 2 over m. I'm sorry, there's a misprint at this point. Uh, and... Uh, as you can see, it looks pretty much like, uh, like uh, the L2 of M version of the, of the Bergman kernel I've discussed, I've pre previously discussed. But, okay, so um, there is an induced metric, HM, relative on, on this boundary. I mean, on, only on, the, on the, some Zariski open set, Zariski open subset of X, which is denoted by X0, I, I can only write down this expression at, uh, at the regular values, okay? So the, the metric I can, I can uh, give it explicitly for you only on this, this open set. And let me just mention that uh, this, this kind of canonical matrix here, like, uh, like, like this, were first considered by Narasim Han and Simha in their analysis of um, modular spaces of uh, canonically polarized manifolds. <coughs> now, let me come to the, to the first result, which is, a joint, which is part of a joint work with uh, Boo Bernson. So the result is as follows. Uh, is that we consider a subjective map where X and Y are non-singular. So let's consider also a line bundle such that uh, the curvature current is semi-positive. So uh, this, uh, this underlines the fact, the, the, uh, in the sense that the metric here is allowed to be singular and then this is no more a uh, one-one form but uh, uh, a current. And uh, the second assumption is that there exists a generic point Y inside Y, such that, um, and the section of the M times KY plus L, such that uh, this, this norm is finite. So you see that <coughs> uh, this is really a hypothesis uh, that, th this hypothesis really means that over the fiber XY, the section U respects the singularities of phi L divided by M. Okay, so phi L may be singular, but uh, the finiteness of the integral means that u, there, is a, there, is a, there is a correlation between the, the singularities of u and the, the, sing, the, the, zero sets, uh, the zero set of u and the singularities of phi l. Then, so the, 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 the conclusion is that the, the boundary m times relative, m the canonical relative plus l admits a metric, that's hmx relative, with positive curvature and which can be described uh, explicitly over uh, 
uh, the risky open set, so HM relative restricted to the fiber XW is equal to the, to the L2 of M Berman kernel. Okay, so we have two, 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 main, two, two important things. The fact that the curvature of the metric is positive and the fact that uh, this metric can be, can be explicitly described over, over, um, over um, the risky open set. Now, just a few very rough comments about the proof. So, um, we first consider, we first consider um, why not inside Y is the risky open set together with, with his pre-image such that this is a, is, this is a submersion. <coughs> and uh, uh, yeah, I want something more about that, but let me just skip this part. Now then, uh, we prove that the metric we can cook up here at this level for the restriction has semi-positivity has semi -positivity is, uh, has semi-positive curvature just by the reduction to the classical uh, results which I mentioned previously. So if you want the, the discussion about the domains inside, inside CN and, and the, the classical results are a sort of uh, hint for the proof of this, uh, of this first part. And now our metric is just, just defined all over this, the risky open set. And it has the, the semi-positive, it uh, has uh, plus, um, it, it's plus to harmonic here. And the, what I promise here is a metric over, over the whole, the whole manifold X. And this, uh, we, we proved that next that this metric extends to the whole manifold X by, uh, by a result I will come to in a second, which is called Osawa Takegoshi theorem. Now, uh, so what is the point here with this extension property? So if you have a plus harmonic function on, let's say, on, on, on the complement of an analytic set uh, inside the ball or in CN, then in order to, to, to show that this plus harmonic function extends across the analytic set, it is enough to show that, that uh, it is locally bounded near the, near the analytic set. So since, since the metric we have here is very explicit, we prove this boundedness property precisely by Osawa Takegoshi theorem. So I'll come to this in a second. So what, I, what, what is important to, to remember out of, uh, of, the, of the, this, so the, the fiber was normalization of sections, like, uh, like, uh, like here, has in fact two consequences. It's really, uh, yeah, I'm still very much surprised about that. So it has two, two, two consequences. Uh, in the first place, it gives us the positivity in the, in the direction of, of the base, so the transversal to the fibers, and also, it helps us to extend the metric across across the singular uh, uh, across the, the the x minus x zero, okay, two at the same time. So uh, I'll come to so the, this is uh, somehow the end of the first part of my talk. I will I will uh, explain the, the the consequences of this uh, a bit later on. Now let me move to the second part of my talk, which has to do with uh, extension theorems. <coughs> Now, one of, the, one of the very, very important results in this field is, uh, is due to Osawa and uh, Takegoshi around uh, 85. And the statement is as follows. So let's consider a smooth fi projective family, P over the, over the, let's say, the unit disk. It is far enough for what we want. And let's consider a Hermitian line bundle <coughs> on X, which has, which has two properties. In the first place, so the metric HL is, is always allowed to be, uh, to be uh, singular, but so the assumption is that uh, singular or not, the restriction here is well defined, <coughs> and the, the curvature uh, of L endowed with this metric is semi-positive. Okay? So now the, the statement is that given any section of X0 and KX0 plus L, such that this L2 norm is bounded, is finite, <coughs> So the norm of u square x minus, minus phi l is finite. Then there exists u, capital U, a section over, of kx plus l over the whole family, such that it, uh, its restriction to the, to the central fiber is just u wedge dp, where p is uh, the map here. And which is much more important is that we have an idea about the size of, the, of, the, of this extension. So the, the L2 norm of capital U is bounded by a constant times the L2 norm of the small u we started with. And the constant here is, a, is a just a numerical constant. It has nothing to do with, with, the, with, the, with the map itself. So what, what, is, the, what is really the, the, the upshot with, with this? this uh, what are the consequences of this estimate? 
you can imagine that even if this is smooth, the, the, the geometry of the, of the fiber is very, can be very, very wild in, in, in the sense that um, uh, you can imagine a, uh, a family where uh, x0 is still smooth but almost singular. That is to say, uh, we, we don't control any geometric invariance of x0. Then, uh, once we control the, once we fix the L2 norm of, of the section small u we start with, we can cook up a, a, a section uh, capital U over the whole manifold. So, you, you can imagine that this is almost singular, but this is a, this is a domain. This is a, this is a smooth um, x capital X. Then uh, th th this means that u wedge dp. It, it, once once you multiply u with with dp. Then you, you can bound you can bound the the pointwise pointwise norm of u. Does it matter how close to be singular this this manifold is? Now this result has many many applications in both analytic and algebraic geometry. Also the the, the one one important feature of this kind of results is that <clears throat> so you make some assumption about about the bounded L here. But then the conclusion is concerns the, the adjoint boundary, kx plus l. So the, 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 the curvature assumptions are here, but the conclusion is for the, for the adjoint boundary. So canonical boundary is so if, if you want the curvature free in this, in this uh, setting. Now, I will, I will come to, to one of the most spectacular results, um, one of the most spectacular consequences of, of this uh, Osawa Takegoshi theorem. Which is the invariance of Pruji Nira proved by by Yum Tong Siu in uh, 2002. So, what is the what is the statement? If we consider a smooth and projective family P over the unit disk, <coughs> giving a, given a pluricanonical section, so small u of m times k x, then there exists u in m times k uh, over the the whole family such that the restriction of the central fiber is u. Well, of course, here to be really precise, it means u wedge dp to the power to the power m. Okay, so the the, the pluricanonical sections over the central fiber they, they extend in a neighborhood. So uh, this is really an, an important result, and if you look in the uh, in algebraic geometry, uh, there, there are many many consequences of of that nowadays. So let me just give you a very very brief and rough account about about the proof. So this this really uh, uh, is a, let me just get back here. This really um, exploits in a very very clever way the fact that uh, the canonical boundary is curvature free in this in this result. So let's see what is the strategy. So we, we in order to to extend the section U, we would like to use the Osawa Takegoshi theorem I stated before. So in order to do that. To do this, to, to do this uh, we have to we, we write the m times the canonical like uh, an adjoint system. So that is to say, canonical plus something, and the something is m minus one times k x. I think this is everybody will agree with me. And then, uh, so in order to apply the Takegoshi, we have to cook up a metric here, which has uh, two properties: the semi-positive semi-positivity of the curvature, and it must be adapted to u. That is to say, that L2 norm of u with respect to the metric here is uh, is required to be bounded, to be convergent, to be finite. Okay, so how we construct the metric? So we construct the metric as follows: uh, we use a sort of auxiliary sections here. So we fix an ample o over the family, which is uh, positive enough such that the this linear system p times k x plus a. Uh, it does not have any any base point for each p running from zero to m minus one and each index j in between one and p. <coughs> and then, uh, so of course, this is absolutely possible since p is running uh, run into a finite number of uh, finite set of numbers. And then we can we have these auxiliary sections without any common zeros. And then we will construct a metric here. Simply by uh, extending by, by successively extension of u to the power k times s p j for each k <coughs> positive or zero. So th this is done by by a sort of uh, inductive or iteration process, if you want. So assume that that the extension of this section, so this lives only on the central fiber. Assume that the, the extension has been performed for some 
for some k and for some p and all j, and we denote by capital U k m plus p j the corresponding sections. So this is a section here, okay. And then, uh, as I as I told you bef uh, at the very beginning of the talk, uh, this family of sections for for j running from one to this index, they induce a metric, phi let's say phi k m plus p, on uh, on the boundary we, we have here. Now. We, we discussed between two cases. Now, if p, that is to say the, the index we have here, is at most m minus 2, so then uh, we consider the section u to the power k times sp plus 1j over the central fiber. So it's a section of kx plus the one on which we have, uh, we have uh, our metric here. So then we can apply Osawa Takegoshi, and we, we have su succeeded in increasing the index p Plus, so we start with p, and here we, we, we extend u to the power k, k to times sp plus 1, okay? So the fact that the, fact that the, the hypotheses in Osawa Kegoshi are, are verified uh, is simply that, so the restriction of u, k and plus p, is exactly that. So the, the L2, uh, L2 norm is, uh, binary, is, is finite. In fact, is even uh, uh, L infinity norm is finite, right? So, uh, the, in order to apply Osawa-Takigoshi, the bounder L is corresponding exactly to that. And of course, if, if P equals to M minus 1, then we cannot increase uh, P any longer because we have reached this level. But we, what we do is, to, is that we increase K. So, it will be K to the power, U to the power K plus 1 times S0J. And the, the same argument apply as before. Okay, so we increase P successively until we, we reach M minus 1. And then uh, we increase k. So this is how this is how how the process works. So this is how we succeed in extending uh, step by step each of of those sections for for k, p, and j in this range. <coughs> now, uh, by Osawa Takegoshi, these successive extensions is quantitative in the sense that we measure in a very precise way, in a very uh, accurate way, the, the norm of the extension we have here. And then uh, we can uh, we can uh, construct the metric on on m minus one kx simply by considering the limits of one over k times phi k. Where phi k is like like that. Okay. So the Osawa Takigoshi come into the picture to tell us that in fact this limit makes sense. Okay. In general, what what could happen is that the the the, the potential the, the the weights of the metric they they uh, even renormalize by one over k they tend to infinity, and then we cannot take the, this, this limit here. Osawa Takigoshi tells us that, in fact, we, if we do it properly, then we can bound this, we can bound this, this uh, from above, and then the limit makes sense. Okay, now let me, let me reformulate this invariance of pre genera in the context of metrics with minimal singularities. So assume that we have a line bound L, which is a pseudo-effective, that is to say limit of effective divisors, and then uh, we, can, uh, we can consider two kinds of metrics with minimal singularities. <coughs> so these kind of objects were introduced in order to study the, the properties, the, the asymptotic properties of uh, these this linear systems, m times l, as uh, m, m goes to infinity. So the first, the first, uh, the first uh, kind of metric with minimal singularities takes in a, in a, into account only holomorphic sections, that is to say we look at the supremum of 1 over m times logarithm of norm of u square, where u is some section of, some holomorphic section of uh, multiple m times l, which is normalized in order to make sense of this supremum by, by, this, by the condition here. And then uh, the, 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 the metric with minimal singularities associated to this is given by exponential minus f1 min times uh, some fixed metric. <coughs> so again, uh, this 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 kind of uh, this kind of metric only takes into account the the holomorphic sections of L and the, all these multiples. Now, one can be more ambitious. That is to say, to consider all the all the all the metrics one can uh, with with semi-positive curvature one can construct on on uh, on L. That is to say, we, we, we just consider the supremum of f of x, where f is some L1 function, such that the, the um, curvature of L with respect to some fixed smooth metric plus the Hessian of f is semi-positive, and the supremum of f is zero. 
Okay, so f here corresponds to logarithm of uh, of u here to the power one over m. Okay. So the the second metric with minimal singularities is uh, is defined like that. And again, the difference between this and that is that the, the, the first one takes into account only holomorphic sections, whereas the second one takes into account all the possible positively curved uh, metrics on the boundary L. Now, of course, it is, it is good to have at hand these kind of objects, but it's even better to have an idea about their singularities, the way that, the, or, put in a different, uh, different way about the regularity because we want to do analysis with, the, with those. So if, if L is, uh, is big, then the regularity properties of this have been studied recently by Demay and Bergman. <laughs> now, uh, uh, the invariance of Puri in this in this context become as follows. It was formulated by Tsuji, Hajime Tsuji. So if uh, the canonical boundary the, the restriction of the canonical bundle over the center fiber is pseudo effective, then the restriction of the minimal metric of the corresponding to the canonical bundle to the center fiber is the same as the, as the minimal metric of the corresponding to the canonical of the center fiber. So you see, no matter how you try to construct here a section of, of some multiple of kx, it will, it will uh, this, this section will uh, will have some pre-assigned singularities which are coming from a global object, from, from this minimal metric um, um, <coughs> of, the, of the canonical boundary of, of the whole family, okay? So uh, this is, yeah. <coughs> so now, next. I'd like to, to discuss a result, uh, uh, a corresponding result in, uh, in uh, algebraic geometry, which is a, a twisted version of that. So let's consider a Q divisor delta, which is equal to nu j y j, where the center fiber and the support of delta have strictly, strictly normal crossings. And let's assume that the components of delta are disjoint, so they don't intersect. <coughs> and assume, moreover, that the, the, that the, the um, multiplicities nu j are lie, be lie between 0 and 1. <coughs> So we fix as well an ample, a Q, line bound, Q ample line bundle or Q ample bundle on, on, the, on X. Now, uh, it was observed by Haken and McKernan that the, the following fact that let, let's say that we take an M which, which uh, clear up the denominators here so that this makes sense. So it, it is really a, a line bundle. M times K plus delta plus H is a line bundle. But Unlike in the, in the case where delta and h equal to zero, there are sections which do not extend. Okay, so this, this is very, somehow very surprising because, uh, because uh, uh, one, one would say that, that the, same, the same strategy we follow before apply, but in fact this is not the case. And uh, these things have to, have to do with the diophantic properties of delta. Anyway, the, the, the situation is not completely, I mean, pe people understand why the proof uh, does not work, but uh, but no no nobody went further than that. Nobody really understands why the extension of sections here are governed by by the Diophantine properties of, of delta. Anyway, Heck and McKinnon, they they did better than that. They they, they didn't only realize that uh, there are sections which do not extend, but they were able to identify precisely the, the sections which do extend. So let me uh, explain you the result. So assume that. For any positive epsilon, the boundary kx plus delta plus 1 plus epsilon h has a q section which is non-vanishing on the, on the central fiber. <coughs> then there exists a, an effective divisor, let's say xi, which is uh, given like that, rho j, yj, restricted to, to x0, so it's over the central fiber, such that uh, delta restricted to x0 dominates the divisor xi, and such that a section u uh, of the restriction extends if and only if the zero set dominates the zero set of u dominates uh, m m xi in the sense of uh, divisors. Okay, so not all the section extends, but only those only those which uh, whose zero set dominates a certain divisor we can we can construct uh, previously. Okay, so in this sense the the, the situation is completely understood. We can, uh, I mean, this, this, once we construct this, this divisor, 
we know who who are the section which extend to to the to the whole the, to the whole family. Now you may wonder why the the ample part is uh, is uh, is here inside the boundary, and let me try to explain you that. So uh, if we consider an ample as it was the case before in the proof of uh, invariance of pre-genera I explained, uh, if, we if we consider an ample which is large enough, then it is enough to show that. <coughs> The section u to the power k zero multiplied with the section with the auxiliary section as a extends for some k zero large enough. So it is enough to 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 have extension of those sections only for index which are sufficiently large. So uh, if you want the 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 the, the, ample, the presence of the ample in the in the boundary makes the the, the extension process uh, finite. So we don't care about quantitative things. Only, uh, only qualitative uh, information, uh, that is to say the extension of those, are enough. And why this is the case? Well, if you write m times this boundary like in a, in a joint form, so it will be kx plus delta plus what we have here, plus k plus delta plus 1 over k0a plus what is left over. So you, you will see that here you, you have a metric which is given by the extension of those sections. Here is the metric, uh, the canonical one induced by the, the divisor here. And the once, once k0 is large enough, this will be positive. Okay? So, the, so the, this means that you can apply Osawa Takegoshi even if uh, you stop the, uh, the whole process at a finite level. <coughs> so the, the, the aim, if you want, would be, so the, the, the next result I will present deals with this, the, 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 this kind of, uh, of extension results. But for the sections of n times k plus delta, that is to say, I would like to explain to you what is happening if one removes the, the ample part from the boundary. So as you will see, um, nothing really happens in the sense that the result is the same, but the proof is a bit more complicated. So how do, how do we construct the, the divisor xi? Let me explain you here. So the assumption is that k times k, kx plus delta plus a has a section whose restriction to the, to the central fiber is not identically zero. And then, uh, and then we, can construct, we can consider the metric phi k on, uh, on this boundary, <coughs> which is induced by the global section of k times k plus delta plus a. And, uh, and then uh, we, just, we can just take the restriction of the, of the uh, associated curvature current to the central fiber, it will give you some numbers here, some rho j k y j restricted to x zero plus some other possible some other part, and uh, and then the divisor xi is simply given by by those coefficients, those coefficients which is just rho j y j restricted to x zero, and rho j is the minimum between uh, the singularities of delta and rho, uh, rho j k, the limit of rho j k you have here, okay. And then the, the result we have with, with Boo Benson is the following, is that the, <coughs> that the metric with minimal singularities associated to k plus delta restricted to x0 is the, is the, the metric induced by, by this divisor plus the minimal metric of kx0 plus delta0, where delta0 is the restriction of delta minus xi. Okay, so, so this is, uh, this is uh, precisely the, the, the Hakon and McKenna results but without, without the ample part in the boundary. Okay, so the, the, the point is that the, the same statement holds uh, in the absence of any ampleness inside delta. So just a word about the proof is that uh, it is a, it's an effective version of an argument due to Ein and Popa. <coughs> so Ein and Popa, they gave a, a very, uh, a very uh, illuminating, very elegant proof of uh, Hagen and McKenna result and, and um, the arguments, they can be used in order to, to prove this result. And, uh, and uh, somehow the, the uniformity we need when we take limits is precisely the, the given by the metric we have constructed for the relative canonical boundary. So this is the, the link, if you want, between, between this result and the, what I've explained before. So the, the metric on the relative canonical boundary come into the picture in order to, to give us the, the uniformity properties needed in order to prove that. <coughs> Okay, now let me just finish with a, with a very, very beautiful and important problem, which is still open, unfortunately. So the, the, uh, 
the statement is uh, as follows. So we consider a non-singular projective manifold and the line boundary links. <coughs> then uh, one can define the code error dimension of L, kappa of L, which is uh, the unique integer such that H naught of, uh, of uh, X and N times L divided, so grows like M to the power K of L, okay? So uh, uh <coughs> if L is the, the canonical, then uh, kappa of, of, uh, of Kx is called the Codera dimension of X and is a very important birational invariant associated to the manifold X. So as, as always, if we will try to look at this invariant from relative point of view, that is to say we consider a map, a surjective map from X to Y and, uh, we, and the, we, we, we would like to have a way of comparing the, the Codera dimension of X and Codera dimension of Y. And the beautiful problem in this, in this setting was proposed by Itaka a long time ago. So he, he said that, in fact, there must be a proper algebraic set Z inside Y, such that we have codera of X is greater than codera of Y plus the codera of, of the fiber, of the generic fiber. So uh, <coughs> Y here belongs to capital Y minus Z, and Z is this proper algebraic set. And the, 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 the results in algebraic geometry I, I've mentioned before, they, they are, many of them they are devoted to, to this conjecture. So the, the way to, to attack it would be to, uh, to study the positivity properties of the relative chemical bundle of the map P and, and his multiples. Now why the relative chemical bundle come into the picture? So, so to speak, very naively, what you, you would like to say is that, okay, let's, let's consider a very generic fiber here. Then we would like to, to extend uh, the, the section of, of uh, some uh, pluricanonical, uh, we, we would like to, to extend the, some pluricanonical sections of the, of the fiber as a section of, of the relative canonical boundary of, of the map P. And in order to extend something, some, some section of a line boundary, you know that the extension is very much linked with the positivity properties of the boundary in question. And then, uh, so the, the positivity properties of relative canonical boundary come into the picture precisely like that, from a very, very naive point of view. So a last comment. So yeah, there are many, many partial results which are known about this, but the general case, as far as I know, is still open. Now, uh, if we have a look at the, at the metric we have constructed, uh, the, the, the AGM relative. So wh what we know about this metric is that, is that in the first place, the restriction, the restriction to, to, to a generic fiber X, Y, is given precisely by, by the, 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 the sections of M times KX, Y. So <coughs> if you want, this, this current, this, this metric can be seen a, <coughs> a sort of simultaneous ex extensions, uh, extension of, not of, of, of the sections, but of the absolute value square of the sections, okay? So, the, the, the current uh, associated to, to this metric has, um, has uh, uh, it is positive and takes into account the section over the central the, the sections over the central fiber. So it has a very very interesting and good properties with respect to, to this problem. But unfortunately, so far we were not quite able to to use them to extract enough geometric information to, to prove the conjecture. So I think I will stop here. Thank you for the attention. That's it. <laughs> My pleasure to thank the organizers for the invitation.
First of all, thank you for your talk. Oh, thank you for listening. <laughs> so we're. I'm going to try to triangulate the questions to you. Please. Can you? Can you? I'm listening. Me? Okay. Okay, go ahead. Uh, so let me ask uh, the audience first. So anyone? Uh, does anyone have a question? Yes. Okay, so let me try to, to ask the question again. So the, I think uh, Amari is asking whether it's possible to use this uh, extension results. Um, so, based, so you want to, res to restrict the dimension of the, of the vibrations, so if, this is, if this is useful for, for this sort of result? Yeah, I think it, it, it could be very interesting to, to have such a... Um, um, uh, such an approach for the for the uh, for the last problem I, I mentioned, but um, there is a there is a case where this uh, this is um, this this is not possible. For example, if the if the dimension if the quadratic dimension of the fiber is zero and the quadratic dimension of the of the uh, manifold Y is zero as well, so then uh, this is really a critical case where. Um, where some some reductions, um, such as your colleague proposed, do not seem to be possible. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's anyway. It goes his his question goes in the right direction. But um, unfortunately, I don't know the rea precisely the answer. <laughs> In the in the Taka conjecture that you mentioned, I think the yes. slide uh, 15. Uh, yeah, the last one. Mm -hmm. So when uh, is it uh, expected? When when is the equality expected to hold in the in the oh. conjecture? Is is there any any speculation in this respect? Mm, no, it depends depends on a lot of factors. Um, also, on it depends on um, how. It depends on the variation of the, of the fibers in the in the moduli spaces. You see, so it's not it's not uh, th th there's no no um, clear conjecture about about the equality case. As far as I'm aware, of course, I don't know everything about the problem, but <laughs> but um, it depends on a lot of factors. Actually, the the, the, the precise uh, precise conjecture it was I think formulated by Fivek and Collard. And uh, takes into account also the, the variation, the so-called variation of, of the um, of the fiber in, inside uh, the moduli spaces. So it's very difficult to, to to see when when precisely you will have equality. No, I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. To give you a straight answer, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, but uh, but uh, yeah. Again, the the, the structure, uh, the, the 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 how complicated the map is. Uh, Plays a role, not only the the, the pluricanonical sections. Yeah. And the uh, 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 last question is: uh, so when you talk about positivity of the the, the relative anticanonical, uh, is there any, is yes. any way to take into account the multiple fibers? Mm, multiple mu multiple fibers should help, but uh, but uh, unfortunately this is not possible uh, to to. Uh, to uh, understand this by, by the method I explained, because the method I explained is just e extension by, by some, some general arguments, by Osawa Takegoshi, if you want, theorem. And this, this, this do not tell you what is happening precisely at the bed fibers. You know that you can construct a metric, you know that it has some positivity properties, but, but uh, to which extent those positivity properties are improved by the multiple fibers, this, this, this I, I, cannot, um, I cannot tell. 
And uh, in, in order to, to take the multiple fibers into account, you really have to understand very well the structure of the of, of the vibration, which is not in my case is just a, just a general a general map. It does not have to be uh, semi stable or whatever. Are there more questions? So, uh, the question is uh, yes. if uh, the difficulty in proving the Taka conjecture uh, lies on finding a uh, on the Hold on, let me, let me listen to the question again. Uh -huh. So the question is whether uh, the difficulty of the conjecture lies on finding one fiber that for which the inequality is satisfied or to show that such fibers are dense. Well, the, the difficulty, if you want, as far as I can see, is that uh, is that, uh, for example, this uh, this uh, this object we construct, this this metric for the relative canonical, we don't know whether this it, it carries enough positivity in order to dominate the the um, in order to be useful for the extension. You see, for for example, if if y if the manifold y is of general type, then we know automatically that that this object the the um, the um, uh, Bergman metric we, we construct. This is this is good enough in order to in order to extend sections from the fiber to the to the general manifold. But in general, uh, if we, for example, if y has quadratic dimension zero, then uh, then uh, we don't know to which to which extent this this current take into account the. Um, uh, this current verifies some hypothesis which which uh, will uh, allow us to extend the sections from uh, from the fibers. So, uh, if you want, it's not a question of uh, some particular fiber, but uh, it's a question of how one can extract. I mean, how how can we extract uh, the positivity informations from 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 the, the from the current we we, we have constructed? So, of course, everybody will be happy if if. Um, for for some particular fiber, uh, we we can extend the sections from of, of the canonical uh, of the fiber, but it's not clear why a fiber should be better than the other one. <laughs> so so um, uh, yeah, it's a matter of the positivity of, of of this current, which whose properties are not yet well understood, although it's very explicit. Mm. Are there more questions? Okay, Mihai, so thank you very much again. And, uh, oh, thank, thank you. Uh, let's thank the speakers. <laughs> thank you, it's really very.